Hello, today I'm going to do a short tutorial. Uh, one of the members of my group asked me how to create a better anti-aliased render using Element 3D. And so I'm going to try and demonstrate that for you and hopefully you'll be able to uh, gain something from this. The first thing we're going to do is go up here to the Composition tab and create a new composition. And I'm going to make mine 1280 by 720, 30 frames per second, and we'll say 20 seconds in duration. Uh, create a new layer, make a new solid, and let's call this uh, E3D. And we'll go back up here again to Effect, go down to the Video Copilot sec tab, and then click Element. Now let's click on the Scene Setup so we can load our model in here. And the first thing I like to do is go to the front view here so that I can see the floor. If you look here at Perspective, this is the floor, uh, this grid, that's the center point of the floor. Actually, let's go ahead and load an object in. What I'm going to use here is the Motion Design 2 pack. If you don't have it, I suggest you get that from Video Copilot. It has a lot of really good high-end kind of uh, models in here that you can uh, build robots and space equipment and sci-fi type things with. Anyway, I'm going to load in this Bionic Core number 8. You'll see it loaded right there. Let's go to the presets. I'm going to go to the physical presets. And I'm going to select Chrome. And I'm going to throw some Chrome on there. Then I'm also going to go to the Environment tab. Click here. Load from File. Let's go to the Version 1 Environments. I'm going to use Town. Because I want to have a Chrome reflection with some sky. Now you'll see that this object is half above the ground and half below the ground. That's the reason why I go to the right view, or I'm sorry, to the front view, and we're going to pull this up and set that right on the ground. And we'll go back to perspective, and we can zoom in using the middle mouse button, and you can rotate around. Alright, let's just hit OK, we'll load that object in. First thing I'm going to do is go up here to the Group 1 setting, right under the Scene Setup, Group 1, and let's click on Create a Group Null, and we're going to create a Group Null. And I'm just going to call this uh, thing null. <laughs> I'm going to go up here to layer and select a new null object. Hit enter and type in camera track. And then I'm going to go up here to layer again and new camera. I'm going to use a 35 millimeter camera. We'll click OK. I'm going to parent the camera to the camera track. I'm going to turn the camera track into a 3D object. Then I'm going to click on camera track. And I'm going to move the camera track up to about the middle of the object. Now I'm going to click on the camera. And I'm going to push in and pull down a little bit. Now you'll see here the anti-aliasing is pretty bad in these areas. Lots of jaggedness. Let's go first to click on active camera, go down to camera view. And still in camera mode, let's rotate the view to a top-down view. Here's your camera, here's your object, here's the camera pointing at the camera track. And let's go up here to Layer, New, and let's click Light. I'm going to make it a parallel light at 153%. OK. Now let's move that light over here, and then using the camera, rotate it back up. And then let's move its the light's uh, track. This is what the light tracks on, so let's move that there. Let's move the light up. Let's go back to active camera. There you go. Now we're going to work on trying to get some of this aliasing a little bit better. Let's go first to the E3D. Let's click on render settings. Let's click on shadows. Let's give it some Ray Trace Shadow. Let's go Ambient Occlusion. Let's turn on Ambient Occlusion. We'll leave it at the presets. Let's move down. Now, go here to Output. When you click on Output, you'll notice here Multi Sampling is set at 8. Super Sampling is set to 0. Enhanced Multi Sampling is set to 0. Let's first turn up the Multi Sampling, or the Super Sampling, to 2. See, it did help a little bit. Let's turn on the Enhanced multi-sampling. A little bit better. Now let's go here to sampling and aliasing. You'll see FXAA smoothing. 
Let's turn off uh, compressed textures. Let's click here for FXAA smoothing. Let's turn that up to about uh, 25. Now you'll see, using your camera tool and zooming in, much nicer, much nicer. You can also crank this up a little higher if you wanted. Bring it up to four. Very nice aliasing looking very good all around um, and you can again you know turn this up to 16 uh, every time you turn one of these up though it's going to you know increase your render times pretty significantly so be judicious with that let's crank this up a little higher put that at 30 okay so you can see here big difference let's turn this let's turn this back down to zero let's turn this back to zero and let's put this back at two that's what it looks like before and let's go back up to eight and four and thirty and here's what it looks like with all of those settings turned on and you'll notice even though it's uh, we've got a lot of settings turned on for anti-aliasing um, it's still pretty pretty reactive still moves pretty well these lines are very crisp and very clean now you'll notice here that there's when you get this close to it it's got a little bit of jagginess here you can kinda of play with that a little bit let's see we'll go back to the scene setup let's click on the object itself <coughs> let's zoom in here and you'll if you click on the group folder you can go you can move down here um, to the bionic core move down to subdivision level and let's turn that up to two and you can tell by putting on the wireframe that's at subdivision level two that's at subdivision level zero that's at subdivision level four okay and let's click OK and as soon as you see the camera icon come back it means it's updated those settings uh, even though it's a much denser model now, you'll notice that it really uh, doesn't do all that much for the smoothness of these corners. Um, as soon as it gets done thinking, uh, we need to get our camera icon back so we know where we're at. And because we've cranked that up pretty high, it's going to take a minute. So yeah, it's taking quite a long time to do this. Most of the time you don't really want to do that. That really does add a huge amount of, uh, and you notice it didn't do that much for this. So let's go back in here, <coughs> back to the bionic core, and we'll just put that back down to one. And you'll see it update much faster. There you go. All right, so now you can see those edges w using only the uh, sampling and anti-aliasing and the multi-sampling and super sampling and enhanced multi-sampling is the way to really kind of make your renders look a lot nicer and cleaner. I hope this has helped. Uh, stay tuned. We'll have some more videos and some more tutorials. If you have anything in particular that you would like me to go over and show you how to use with Element, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Make, um, post on, this, on the group site. And uh, we'll be back later with that. Okay, thank you.